In my last video, I presented my evidence for why I have come to the conclusion that Alan Tippett was privy to details of the assassination, that is, that he was Temple Man, and he knew <clears throat> that uh, John Kennedy had been shot in the temple. From the position he was in at the time, the shot to the temple happened after the car had passed, and I don't think he would have been able to see that well enough to know that John Kennedy had been shot in the temple. So I conclude that he knew that that had been the plan, and apparently the plan went as planned. And that's why he told McGuaters that they shot him in the temple. So, this new uh, thinking about Alan Tippett uh, makes me wonder whether he actually did something in Dealey Plaza to further the plan. If he knows the plan and he's in Dealey Plaza, then it's reasonable to think that he might have done something uh, to further the plan. And I think he did. This is a frame from the Weigman film, or maybe it's the Weigman film. I never can tell. Uh, and in the red circle there, primarily that's the Chisholm family, Mr. Chisholm, and you can see the short one there is Ricky Chisholm. But to the right above the shoulder of Mr. Chisholm is one of the two teenage boys. Uh, they wear similar jackets. That's how I know it's one of them, because I can see the white stripe on his shoulder. They're not the same jacket, but they're similar. They both have white stripes on the shoulders. And this boy is apparently already starting up towards the pergola, as the Chisholms are still just standing there. This, uh, nobody else is running away. A couple people have sat down at this point, but the boys are in motion already, which implies maybe they have some intent to do something. Here is a following frame to the uh, Wigman in the Wigman film, to that one. And it, you can see, if you look hard, I didn't circle this one, but one of the boys again is there, heading towards the pergola. Well, most of the people are just standing there looking confused. And this is another frame from the Wigman film that comes after that. In blue is circled the boy that I identify as Alan Tippett. It's not, I'm not going to try to explain that here, why I've come to that conclusion. But that's that, my conclusion of that. And red is his friend. And that red one is the same one we've seen before. So it looks to me as if Alan Tippett was off on the mark here faster than just about anybody else. The green uh, circle there includes primarily the Tippett, uh, the, uh, the, uh, <laughs> what the hell is their name? The Chisholm family. Mr. Chisholm is the action man sort of on the right there whose uh, legs are far apart and he's bent over a little bit. I think, I think the yellow dots there are on Mrs. Chisholm and little Ricky is the lower one. I think Mrs. Chisholm is about to pick up Ricky. We see her later carrying him. And uh, the blue dots there are umbrella man and dark complected man already sitting down together. So that's the action at this point. Anyway, the, the, the boy of interest to me here is the one in blue. That's Alan Tippett. And another following frame in the Wigman film shows Mr. Chisholm running towards the east end of the pergola. And the next frame in the film shows one of the teenage boys. You can tell once again by the white stripe on the shoulder. I believe that this is not Tippett, that this is Tippett's friend there, and that uh, Alan Tippett has uh, stopped for some reason, as we'll see in the next frames. And in these next frames in the Wideman film, as the camera pans over to the left, we see one of these boys, it's not clear right here which one, but when the uh, frame, when the camera slows down, and stops we can see that uh, it's the one with the with the lapels being are white on the jacket and where he's got two separate stripes on each shoulder and that's Alan Tippett and this is an important frame to me because apparently he's not wearing eyeglasses 
Whereas in a later uh, photograph, they have this boy wearing eyeglasses. I think those eyeglasses were applied at a later time in order to hide or obscure the identity of the boy. But anyway, my interpretation of the photography as to what's going on here is that Tippett's friend has passed him at this point and is already up near the east end of the pergola, and Tippett, for whatever reason, stopped here for a moment. Now the next two images here are from the Bell film. This is Tippett's friend up by the pergola already. You can tell because he's got the light pants and you can see his butt there. It looks like he might even be sitting on the pedestal there. But anyway, this is the, he's the one with the light pants compared to Alan Tippett who has dark pants. And in the next frame we can see the other boy, which has to be Alan Tippett. He's moving from the area where the uh, Chisholm's are uh, at this time or slightly after. So I think Alan was over with the Chisholm's and uh, as you see in one of my videos, I think it's called a handbag. Uh, I think a switch was made with the Chisholm's handbag and I think Alan probably had something to do with that. Either he, uh, he might have received the new handbag they were to take, the longer one, from his father on the other side of the pergola or maybe he was given the shorter handbag that Mrs. Chisholm started the day with, and maybe his job was to dispose of that. But I think that's the involvement Alan Tippett had. I think he did something involving the handbags. So, considering what I think he did here, that would make him guilty of murdering the president. So, maybe Alan got off easy. Because he was 14, he was just short of 14 years old at the time, and uh, so maybe, uh, I mean, I don't want to give the wrong idea here. This was not, it was not this conspiracy that murdered JFK. This was a conspiracy that existed with Oswald and Tippetts, and I think Ruby was probably the double agent involved here, because Ruby said he could play both sides of the Cuba thing. And I think that's what he was doing. Ruby was the, uh, the American intelligence double agent directly involved in the conspiracy. So I'm not saying that the, I mean, I think they, this conspiracy, this Cuban conspiracy with Oswald and Tippetts uh, was known about, but that the American intelligence used that conspiracy to murder JFK. And they've got these people who really did act to murder JFK, that is Oswald and Tippett, so they are in their minds justified in dispensing justice to them and they get rid of Kennedy. So it's kind of okay because uh, the, the murdered people are guilty uh, and they get rid of Kennedy, but of course they are guilty too and that's the part they don't want us to know about.